It's a great night to meditate. There's a gentle drizzle coming down. Looking out, all you can see is the, the fog of the drizzle. Everything turns your attention back inside. So what have you got here? You've got the breath coming in and going out, and a mind that may or may not want to settle down, or a mind whose various committee members may or may not be in agreement about settling down. So try to find the members that want to stay with the breath, that want to look inside and strengthen them. How do you strengthen them? Well, first there's conviction that this is a good thing to do, this practice we're doing here, something taught by people of no defilement. People have found true happiness, and people had no ulterior motive in teaching this to anyone else. They had found that this method had worked. They would tested it inside. And so now we have the opportunity to practice. And the strength of persistence. just a matter of coming back, coming back, coming back, figuring out how much energy you have to put into this right now, the kind of energy you can sustain. It takes a little while to get the right balance. The image the Buddha gives is of tuning a lute. You try to tune the string so it's not too taut, not too loose. It gets just the right sound, and that comes more and more with practice. Then there's a strength of mindfulness. You try to remember this is really what you want to do. Remember all the various reasons you have for wanting to be here. And those reasons point you to what's happening with the breath right now. If you're going to see anything about the mind, you've got to see it here in the present moment. So you want to look carefully, you want to look skillfully, so you get results. The practice of mindfulness involves bringing three qualities to your practice. Ardency, alertness, mindfulness. Ardency is the quality of wanting to do it well. It's the element of will in the practice. Alertness is the attention you're paying to the present moment, seeing what's actually going on. Is the breath coming in? Is it going out? How is it going in? How is it going out? Does it feel good? If it doesn't feel good, then you bring in some more ardency to pay careful attention to what you're doing here. So you can experiment, see what's working, what's not working. And the mindfulness is what reminds you is why you're here, reminds you of what you've done in the past that's worked, hasn't worked to get the mind to settle down. You want to bring that to bear as well. You see these three qualities in all kinds of activities. Years back, I was reading something by Cicero. He was talking about how the mind has three functions. There's will, there's attention, and there's memory. And they correspond to ardency, alertness, and mindfulness. Of course, he had a different use for these faculties. He was a lawyer, gave speeches trying to influence people's opinions. So he wanted to draw on their memory. They wanted to capture their attention so they would get their will in alignment with his. Basically, this is how you look at the mind when you're trying to persuade it. You have to speak in a way that 
captures your audience's attention. And if you want them on, their, on your side, you've got to draw on memories, things they're fond of, things they believe in, things they hold dear, or fears that you have in common, to get them to will in the direction you want them. So in this way, when you're trying to get the committee to settle down, you're being like a lawyer, trying to remind the various members of what's good in life why the practice is something you really want to develop. You have to catch their attention. You remind them to get them in line with your will, which is to do this well. A few years back I was listening to a famous pianist from Austria, I think he is, was giving his farewell concert tour here in the States. And he talked about what it was like to play the piano, what functions were going on in the mind. And it turned out it was the same three functions. He was trying to listen carefully to what he was playing as he was playing it. At the same time, he had to remember what he had in mind when he sat down to play the piece. He had to remember what the piece was, how to play it, and also remember how he'd been playing it up to that point. Because sometimes as you're playing, your playing goes in a different direction from what you intended. And the next question is, how to play the next note? Do you want to go in line with your original intention, or have you found something better? Is the way you're playing moving in an interesting new direction that you want to explore, or do you want to keep things in line with your original intention? So it's the same three functions. This is how the mind functions when you're playing the piano well. So you might think in this case that when your mind finally does settle down with the breath, you're still paying attention to what's happening, but less need to persuade the mind to actually stay here. And the use of your memory and your will is a lot more fine-tuned. Just remembering enough to keep the mind with the breath and willing it just enough to will it in the right direction. So as you're settling down, think of yourself as being like a lawyer, trying to convince yourself to stay here, your reasons for staying here. Get everybody on board. When the mind finally does stay with the breath and it seems like it's settling down, then you're more like a musician. You're getting a higher use out of these three functions of mind. In this way you strengthen your practice again, so you can bring it to the strength of concentration. Mindfulness is not a state of mind free of agendas. It has a very strong agenda. You want to move the mind to stillness, because you realize that this is an important part of the path. The function of mindfulness is to remember that, so you don't forget where you are. You don't forget your purpose for being here. You don't forget how to stay here. So evaluate how things are going and make adjustments as is necessary. That helps you to settle down, then the mind can move in with the breath, get a sense of unification. That really strengthens your practice, strengthens your sense of well-being right now. And then there's the strength of discernment. As you watch what you're doing and you notice what is skillful and unskillful. That use of evaluation and concentration is actually an important part of discernment. It's how the two qualities go together. John Sawat would often speak of this. He'd say, make it your signal in your mind, something that you read. Where is there stress? That's something that needs to be looked into. That's where you're going to find ignorance. Where is there anything in the mind that's disturbing your peace? That's the problem. The peace itself is what you rely on. 
so you can see things clearly, and you have the strength to see them clearly, the strength to want to look at them. If you're not feeling well nourished by the breath, if your good committee members are feeling weak, you're not going to be willing to look into the mind's problems. You're a lot more likely to want to place the blame on things outside. The mind is not at peace because of that disturbance from somebody else, something else outside. But it's as great a sense of well-being inside. You see more and more that the real difference is not so much what's happening outside, it's what's happening inside. It's not like you're laying blame inside and simply pointing that this is where your opportunity is. The other day someone was asking why it is that we keep focusing on the problems from inside. Aren't there problems outside? Of course there, of course there are problems outside. But the reason why your mind is weighed down is because of the problems inside. And that's, those are problems you can do something about. And if you haven't straightened out the problems inside, you probably have a pretty messy idea of how to straighten out things outside. And sometimes in your efforts to straighten things out, you make them worse. So you want to be confident that you're coming from a good place, a place of strength, a position of strength, a position of well-being. That's why we look inside to see where there's stress and what can be done about it. This is how all the good parts of the mind become strong. Your conviction, your persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. Keep focusing them inside here. As I said, the, the night is helping us tonight. The drizzle outside is like a blanket. Gives you a sense of security. And allows you to focus all your attention inside. <laughs> 